I'm done, Gene. Why? I just because I want to be. Did you ever think for once in your life, maybe I want to do something different? Maybe I want to quit. You know, if I didn't care about you, oh, I wouldn't argue you with you that. Care and quit whining. Seven years, Dean, since I got bucked off and I got bucked off the other night. Seven years. Well, it gets to a guy. It hurts. And just the way I've been roping lately, the way I've been handling horses, the way I've been doing everything. I ain't doing shit right, Dean. Maybe you need to look in there. Instead of changing. Maybe I need to find a new profession. I don't think you're gonna find it. I don't think you're gonna find it that makes you happy. I ain't no cowboy. I'm Gene Franson, I'm 28 years old, um, I'm a cowboy, I grew up cowboying since I was a little boy, I've lived here my whole life, this is, this is just my whole life, is being right here cowboying. I started coming up here on this range with my dad before I turned two years old. I just follow dad around and he'd take care of his cattle and this this is home this is where I grew up I'm Josh Olson I'm 34 years old I spend my summers up here in Chesterfield taking care of the cattle on this grazing association over here and I guess our responsibility is to maintain herd health and make sure everything's healthy and uh, if something gets sick we have to doctor it. God damn it! Get out! Get out! It's been our way of life ever since we were old enough to remember. This is just, you know, these are the things we've done. And it's just our way of life.
We stay until the 1st of November. So we're up here for six months. Me and Josh are really good friends, and we've been really good friends before we had this job. He's a very good, kind-hearted person. Uh, he doesn't show it on the outside. He's, he's kind of rough on the outside, but once you get to know him, there's no other person in the world I'd rather be friends with or cowboy with than him. I think Josh is just getting wore out. He's been here for a while and and he's got hurt a couple of times um, and uh, took the excitement out of it for him we don't have any electricity or running water but you get used to it I mean sometimes it'd be nice to lay down and watch TV or watch a movie, but uh, it's, it's tougher, and it's not for everybody. grocery shopping we go down into Blackfoot which is about an hour away we try to make it a point to have other things to do if we need to trade horses or out horses for fresh horses we'll do that we do it all at the same time because it's so far away You're alone most of the time. A lot of the times, you know, it'd be nice to have a wife and kids. But I think cowboys have been lonely for hundreds of years. Ever since there was ever the first cowboy, I think he was probably just as lonely as the cowboys now. There's really no girls around here, but uh, I've been divorced a few times and just don't miss the girls that much. And with the kind of lifestyle I have, that's going to be really hard to find a girl that can live that way. But I would like to, I would like to get married and have a family again. I'm hoping that'll all work out. Get 
I don't know, maybe we all like it. Maybe we like being lonely and feeling kind of sad once in a while because we're alone. Well, I'm Ras Butler, I'm 52 years old, been a cowboy all my life. I'm the fourth generation on this place. And my kids are the fifth, my uncle's got great grandkids, so there's six generations on this place. And they've come over here 100 years ago, 1909, and covered wagons and settled this country. That's my family roots. This is my place. <laughs> Josh and Jean, they're just good, good people. They're my friends. Known them since his little kids. There's nothing I wouldn't do for them, and there's nothing they wouldn't do for me. Two young old cowboys. Tough for nails and just kind of making life better for everybody. We as cattlemen have been out here doing this for hundreds of years. I mean, we, we've been doing this forever and this is our livelihood. And the environmentalists, they worry about us destroying the grass and the cricks and things like that. And we don't because we want them there for our kids and for the next generation. We put more effort into trying to conserve it than any environmentalist ever would. Instead of just running the cows loose wherever they want to go, we've got different pastures, so we're rotating the pastures. Uh, and that's for environmental reasons. And we started that practice about, oh, 10 years ago. It's called holistic resource management. We took them cattle out of an area that still had grass there, but we didn't beat it to the dirt, you know. We left some grass for the wildlife, and we left some grass that'll go to seed and make new grass for next year, and we moved them to another area where there's plenty of grass. And, and if you just kind of take those little steps and do those little deals, this country will still be the same in a hundred years as it was 200 years ago. It seems like the agenda is to make the whole Western United States a playground, a park. 
so everybody can go see and play. Uh, it's like when they reintroduced the wolves. Devastating to the agriculture industry. The livestock industry, it's just devastating. They aren't even the native wolves that's always been here. There's always been wolves here, but the farmers and ranchers have kind of kept them under control where we can live together. They want the West to be like it used to be, so they bring in wolves, but they're trying to drive the cowboys out. Well, we're just a pretty big part of the West, and if they want it to be like it used to be, we got to all go back East, get on a boat, and go back to Europe, and let the Indians have it all back. How was my grandpa? What kind of a guy was he? Well, your grandpa, I didn't know him as well as I knew Merlin. Well, that's my grandpa. Merlin well, is my yeah. grandpa. Well, he, I didn't know your grandpa like I knew Merlin. Of course, I knew Merlin from my age. Well, that, Merlin is my grandpa. Well, yeah, I know yeah. that. Okay. Oh, I know that as long as you've been alive long uh -huh. before that. Well, I knew that, but I mean, we wasn't as close related all the time as I was with Merlin. Mm -hmm. I knew Merlin for, well, he's about my age, pretty close. Pretty, you know. About three years oh, or so. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's about my age, yeah. So, I mean, that's a long story short, so... Uh, what did you admire? But I'll tell you one thing about it. He was a hell of a good friend of mine, I'll tell you that for sure. A hell of a good friend. My dad, he's still, he's 91 years old this year, and he still won't turn the place over to me. He's still got to control this. He still has to, I got my cows, and he's got his cows, but his part of the deal, he's got to control that because he won't quit and he won't give up. It's his, by God. He, he can't do nothing like he used to do, but he's always tinkering and, and farting around with stuff, you know, just, and he won't let go because he's a cowboy. And if he quit, he'd die. About one of the last times he rode, when I rode around the shed there and he was, he was, so proud he had to go get a ladder to get on that horse and he didn't want nobody to see that and when he couldn't do that no more that was my hero that couldn't do it no more huh but yeah we'll all get there we'll all be there sooner or later there comes a time you just can't do it no more, but that was pretty heartbreaking. And I'll be there one day, and and he's there now. He still wants to, he just can't. Do you ever thought you wanted to get on a horse again? Are you shitting? Christ, I try to do it all the time, and I can get on the son of a bitch again. <laughs> <laughs> I could get on the son of a bitch. When you get 90 years old, Hoss, and you think, you dumb bastard, what are you trying to do now? Have you ever tried that? Nope, never been there. You haven't been that way, have you? Nope, I haven't. Well, let me tell you a little something, sonny boy. When you get to the point when you can't throw your goddamn leg over the horse, then... You're sort of shit out of luck. You mm. follow me? Yep. Yep, I do. You don't have to follow me. All you got to do is just listen once in a while. That's the thing about this cowboy and deal, Gene. I only feel comfortable around a certain, just a small handful of guys that make me feel comfortable. 
Cody Barfus made me feel comfortable. He did. But you, when I'm with you, I don't worry about nothing. I'll do anything as long as I'm with you. Because You know, right here is probably a good time for me to tell you. The reason that I don't want you to quit cowboying is because I don't think, and maybe I'm wrong, and hopefully I am, is I think that our time together is done. Is it? It was a nice day yesterday. Got to see old friends and and cowboy and there's nothing better than that. That's part of cowboying is helping each other out. But it, it kind of breaks the, the monotony up for us. Just sitting over here, you know, we see each other all the time anyways. So it was really nice for me to be able to talk to one of my grandpa's friends and have, have him tell me stories about what they used to do. And it was a lot of fun to sit down and visit with Woodrow. I like to do it every chance I get. It's tough for them old cowboys like that to not be able to do it anymore. But we're all headed there. Life catches up with everybody. It don't matter what you're doing, whether you're cowboying or working in town. I just take a lot of pride in cowboying and, and it's kind of a tough life sometimes, but I wouldn't have it any other way. And it's hard to say, you know, I could get in a wreck up here and break my back or break my legs or whatever you know but uh, I think it's worth the risk just to be able to be proud of something my dad he, he was my biggest example to become a cowboy I looked up to him a lot I still do yeah he taught me about everything I know about cowboy and I learned it from him so he, he didn't care what our profession was going to be or what we did just as long as we was honest and and took care of other people and took care of our neighbors and and just kind of how cowboys do you know but uh, but he wanted us to learn the values of, of cowboying I've always really looked up to my dad. He, uh, growing up, he gave me every opportunity to do anything I wanted to do. And he did it, you know, he didn't make a lot of money either, but he did it anyway and he gave everything to me and gave me every opportunity to be, you know, to go do things that he didn't get to do. I got to rodeo for 15 years. And that's because he gave me that opportunity, and he never had that opportunity growing up. Uh, rodeoing's a lot of hard work because you got to drive a lot of miles, and you're still doing things that are a little bit dangerous or a little bit risky. But you're still around the same good kind of people at those rodeos. It's just a different. It's the same, but it's different. Uh, cowboying's the same way. You got to do a lot of different things, and uh, sometimes, like I say, we're up here for six months. We don't really have a social life. <laughs> Go on, get up! Most of what you've seen in a rodeo, except for the bull riding, most all of that is, was used at one time or is still used to cowboy today. And now it's become more of a sport than a necessity. You know, 
So I would say that for the most part, the people, the, the, the guys and gals at Rodeo, they kind of still have the same ethics. You know, you're still honest. You still take care of your friends. You still take care of your family. You do the very best you can. It's really hard for us to survive right now. And it's gradually went downhill in the last 10 years. 10 years ago, we could make a little money doing this and ranchers were doing okay. The way the economy's gotten to be, it's just, I think it's been hardest hit on the rancher and the cowman. There's so many guys with money and big companies that have bought out all the little ranches and they do it, for them it's a tax write-off for their business, but they've bought out thousands of little ranches. And so for us to just jump into something and start, we'd have to have a lot of money to get started. If something doesn't change, you're gonna see a lot more guys go out of business. And big business is gonna run it. And that is gonna kill the American cowboy because they don't run it with cowboys. I was a little kid there was other little kids around that always wanted to be a cowboy but they, they lived in town they you know and, and what they thought of as a cowboy is somebody that puts a hat and boots on and jumps on a horse and goes and rides and chases cows and ropes and and, and it's fun and, and enjoyable and uh, that's a little bit more the Hollywood version of the cowboy You can't take 20,000 head of cattle and trail them from here to Kansas City anymore. There's too many big cities, there's too many highways. And so because of population and people, we, we can't do it that way anymore. We're just a group of people trying to survive. We try to do what's right, and we try to do our best in whatever we do. We try to give when we can. We try not to take too much when we need something. Cowboying is a lot more than just just making a paycheck. It's it's your it's your life. It's what you are.
cowboys were what made America, or the West anyway, what it is. And it means a lot to me to still be a part of that heritage. The old cowboys from back in the old days, they were tough guys. And I guess I got a lot of respect for them, so I want to be like them. Gonna be tougher than shit. I would say that you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. But, uh, but to find a real cowboy, try to get to know somebody. To be a cowboy, it's a tough road. But you gotta love to do it if you're a cowboy. I think when you meet a cowboy, you'll know he's a cowboy. Thank <laughs> you.